fellow slivers across the multiverse. Welcome back to your one and only trustworthy hive. Nicol Ball as the Ravager was the first commander I ever built. On this video, I will share my list with you. A list that has already won me a lot of commander games. But it's by no means the end all be all Nicol Ball as the Ravager commander deck tech. You could make this list far more expensive and far more powerful. Or maybe you could build it more budget friendly. Maybe you could go with a different theme, such as Grixis Control, Grixis Super Friends, Nicol Bolas Tribal, Flicker Effects, etc. But that's the beauty of Commander. The journey is the goal itself. The first thing I did when building this deck, and the first thing I do when building any deck on any format for that matter, is asking myself the following two questions. What is it I want my deck to actually accomplish? How do I want to win? With Nickel Ball as the Ravager, I really liked that in Commander, its enters the battlefield effect is always a four things happen for the price of one. Each opponent has to discard, and I'm left with a decent body that, if left unchecked, will transform into a much bigger threat. So I decided to go with the each opponent has to discard sort of theme and strategy. I wanted to go after my opponent's hands every turn, so that when I played something game ending, they would probably be out of answers. Without further ado, let's jump into the structure of the deck and the cards in each category. If your deck is lacking in any of these two categories, especially in Commander, you're gonna have a bad time. It doesn't matter if your other cards are the best of the best. The deck just won't properly function without these two core elements. Now, Grixis colors are kinda terrible when it comes to ramp, but on the bright side, blue and black are just the best at about anything else, including drawing cards. Signing Blood draws two cards for the price of two mana and two life, which in Commander is a pretty good deal. Ristic Study is probably the best card drawing engine any deck running blue can have. These two cards are excellent budget options for drawing cards. What's more, Surveil and Scry let you look at more cards from the top of your library and that's always very useful. Pull from Tomorrow and Stroke of Genius are plain and simple, instant speed, draw as many cards as your mana will allow you to. There are many other cards in this deck that can draw more cards for us, but since it's not their only function, I have them in other categories we will discuss in just a moment. With Nickel Ball as the Ravager, we will mainly rely on Mana Rocks for ramp. Sol Ring is basically the official commander Mana Rock. Wayfarer's Bubble is here because, well, it's here because of Mitch at the commander's quarters, and he's actually not wrong. We play the Signets because, hey, they are ramp, and they are fixing, and they are good. Arcane Signet is the newest Mana Rock on the list, and I think it will become almost as popular as Sol Ring because it's quite good. Now. These three mana rocks I don't really love, but like I said earlier, in Grixis colors you have to work with what you've got. Speaking of working with what you've got, one day I was checking one of the binders from the local game store where I play Commander the most and I stumbled upon this little enchantment. I already knew of the existence of the card, but I had forgotten what it did. So when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is not exactly ramp, but it kinda helps you get to the same place which is casting more spells each turn. Trust me, as foretold has never disappointed me. It gets worse when you draw it on later turns of the game, but since our curve is not crazy high, the average is actually 3.1 CMC. As foretold, we'll surely cast spells for free if it stays on the battlefield two or three turns. Next, we have Expedition Map, which I obviously know is not ramp. However, it can search for lands that tap for additional mana, so trust me, we want the map in here. Speaking of tapping lands for additional mana, again, I know Cryptgast is not exactly ramp, but it doubles the mana our swamps produce. Remember Expedition Map? Yeah, I think you've already guessed which land we almost always search for if we already got the map and the ghast. If you haven't guessed, I'll tell you later on when we discuss the mana base of this deck. Now let's talk about the cards that knock into shape our make each opponent discard over and over again strategy. Torment of Hellfire is not only totally on theme, both in functionality and flavor I must say, but it can also be a powerful finisher if played at the right time. It is one of the most popular finishers in almost any black deck for a reason. 
It goes without saying that Cryptgast, our mystery land and torment of hellfire get along really really well. These next cards might seem like major letdowns after torment of hellfire, but they are key to our strategy. They are also 4 things happen for the price of 1 like Nicol Bolas, they are mana efficient and they start slowly leaving our opponents empty handed. Kroxa here doubles down as a recurring Nicol Bolas Ravager type of effect and a recurring threat since it can literally escape from the graveyard. Siphon Mind doubles down as yet another make everyone discard effect and most of the time a draw 3 cards spell. So far this deck might seem like it's too fair for commander, but here is where things get uh, interesting and probably salty for our opponents. What are a bunch of wheel effects doing here? You must be thinking right now. Well, they can serve more than one purpose. We can reshape our own hand while completely destroying our opponent's hands or well, you can play Narset Parter of Veils before you do any of that. Narset is so sweet in this deck. Our opponents are constantly discarding their spells. The usual remedy for that is just drawing a greater amount of cards than those you discard. Narset here is gonna make that really hard for everyone. Play any of our wheel effects while Narset is on the battlefield and oh boy, a lot of games will end right there. The Eldest Reborn and Angrath are just amazing in this deck. If the saga stays on the battlefield for the whole 3 chapters, man, it will most likely produce a ton of value. The same goes for Angrath, if it stays for 2 or 3 turns, it will be the gift that keeps on giving. Tassigur's Cruelty will be, most of the time, a 1 mana, each opponent discards 2 cards. That's just efficiency right there. Now let's talk about the payoffs for all of our make every opponent discard spells. Bloodshift Ascension is some seriously broken enchantment. It can win games on its own once it has the 3 quest counters, which is not something incredibly difficult to accomplish, especially in Commander. And of course we're running Mindcrank. I mean, come on now, that's a 3 mana, 2 card combo that kills each opponent if it goes off. Liliana's Caress, Megrim and Rider's Wake are basically the same effect, which in this deck, with all of the discard we have, it's gonna drain our opponent's life total for a lot during a single game. Waste Not is another broken enchantment in this deck. It will make zombies for you, it will give you extra mana, it will draw you cards. It's definitely one of the best payoffs we can play. Last but not least, we have Get's Grimoire and Painful Quandary. I'm not sure if I would classify Get's Grimoire as a payoff or card draw or both, but in this deck, you can be sure it will do some serious work. Painful Quandary is another amazing card in this deck. A lot of times, commander games end because of small but steady life loss or damage. Painful Quandary brings the steady part, but the life loss it will generate won't be exactly small. Your opponents will pay the life the first couple of times, but when they are suddenly at 15 or 10 life, you can bet they will start discarding or play nothing until they can remove the Quandary from the game. Now let's go over the pieces of interaction we run in this deck. For mass removal, we run two of the best options in Commander. Toxic Deluge is just ridiculous, it can even take down indestructible monsters. The Black Wrath of God is also a staple for a reason. For targeted removal, we want our spells to be as versatile as possible. V-Devil and Braska's Contempt can deal with both creatures or planeswalkers. V-Devil can even deal with problematic artifacts. If there is a major weakness this deck has, it's graveyard based decks, because with all of our discard we're just kinda doing their job for them. That's why we have Ragdos Charm, which can get rid of a problematic graveyard, but it can also destroy an annoying artifact or it can also deal a lot of damage to decks that play tons of creatures or produce tons of tokens. Soul Guide Lantern is also amazing, it exiles everyone else's graveyard for just one mana or if no one is doing anything really crazy with their graveyards, you can always use it to draw an extra card. That's good flexibility right there. And then we have Ashiok Dream Render, who is just an amazing Planeswalker card overall. Not only it helps us fight graveyard strategies, but that static ability is gonna do some serious work. And here we have our counter magic. Counter spell needs little introduction and even less explanation. Spell Swindle doubles down as a counter spell and if played correctly, as a weird blue ramp card. Like I said, Grixis is not the best at ramping, but it is amazing at interacting, so Spell Swindle is quite the unique card in this deck.
Okay, to round up this deck tech, let's go with what I like to call the good stuff cards. These are cards that don't necessarily have amazing 10 out of 10 synergy with the rest of the deck or with our commander, but man, they're just that good. Whether you are playing with 60 or 100 cards, searching your library for exactly the card that you need, it's pretty darn good and kinda broken. And you know what else is pretty good and kinda broken too? Playing whatever you wanna play, whenever you wanna play it. If you thought Toxic Deluge and Damnation were our only two board wipes, you thought wrong. Because come on, of course we want Cyclonic Rift in this deck. If there is something that Nicol Bolas loves, he's being a goth. These two cards are not only powerful threats on their own, but their plus abilities add even more redundancy to our destroy our opponent's hands strategy. And come on, are you gonna tell me they are not super flavorful too? And since we're on the topic of powerful threats that are also flavorful, the Citadel here might just be one of the absolute best cards of this deck. The amount of card advantage this can generate is simply absurd. And finally, one of the most classic, most beloved, most elegant two-card combos in the history of the game. The Cyber Exarch and Splinter Twin. Let me tell you why they're here. The deck itself is quite fair. It doesn't produce infinite mana, it doesn't have broken graveyard combos, it doesn't have game-ending creatures. So I decided this deck should have at least one of these crazy infinite combos. And the Seaver Exarch and Splinter Twin, well, they have a sweet spot in my heart. And finally, we shall discuss the mana base. If you already possess or have the money to acquire fetches and duels and shocks and temples, then by all means, play them. However, I would like to talk about other lands that I absolutely recommend getting for this deck. Remember Expedition Map and Crypt Ghast and the Mystery Land? Well, most of you probably already guessed that the Mystery Land is Urborg, Tomb of Jagmoth. If all of your lands are also swamps, then all of them produce double mana with the Ghast in play. Urborg plus 7 more lands and a single Torment of Hellfire will probably end most games. But why stop there? I run Cabal Coffers as well as Thespian Stage for extra value. Another way to get these lands into your hand, besides Expedition Map, is through Tolaria West, so I also run it in this deck. If you want to see the complete mana base I usually run, as well as the full deck list, check the description box below. I left the full list written down and a tapped out link for the deck itself. By the way, according to tapped out, this exact same list will cost you about $750, which is the same price as many modern, pioneer and even standard decks, and it will be 69% competitive. And there you have it, that's my Nicol Bolas the Ravager Commander deck tech. I have to be honest with you, it's not the most powerful deck out there, I know that. However, it can definitely hold its own at a commander table. It's super fun and super customizable and it will teach you a lot about incremental advantages, the massive value of 2 for 1 cards, and the deck itself has a lot of playability, so the experience will feel fresh and challenging every time. It can play really well against casual decks if you want it to, and it can actually compete against powerful and popular commanders. That's why I wanted to share it with you here at The Hive. Do you have questions about the deck or even suggestions for upgrades? I would love to read and talk about them with you on the comments below. Oh, and by the way, I really want to know, how did you start playing Commander? Who was the first Commander you ever built? Leave a comment below and spare no details. If you like this video and would like to see more content like this, please leave your thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, click on that notification bell so you never miss a new video, and share our content with other slivers across the multiverse. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.